Hello everyone, I am Mirko and today I talk about our work on utilizing mask RCNN for waterline detection in the Carnot Sprint Media Analysis, which is of particular interest in the field of kinematic parameter analysis in order to optimize the performance of athletes. This is a joint work together with Marie-Sophie van Braun and Patrick Frenzel, with whom I work together at the Leipzig University of Applied Sciences and with Christian Keding at the Institute for Applied Training Science in Leipzig. Let's first start with explaining what the analysis of kinematic parameters in Carnot Sprint is all about. Well, the analysis is based on linear sequences that are recorded from a motorboat and from approximately perpendicular direction. And given this video sequence, frames are then manually selected with respect to the state of the pedal. So for instance, when the pedal enters the water, which can here be seen on the left, or when it leaves the water, as it can be seen on the right. And each selected frame is then analyzed separately. And this analysis comprises the measurement of a number of different angles, as well as a number of different distances. And the actual number of parameters depends on the particular discipline. That is, a total of six angles and three distances, for instance, for kind of sprint, and three angles and three distances in kayak sprint. Today, this is done manually, and as you can imagine, this is very time consuming, and in addition to that, it is also prone to individual errors. And therefore, we are interested in solutions to automate this procedure. Well, and in order to determine these desired parameters, one needs several components which are depicted on this slide. First, one needs key points on the body and one could, for instance, employ key point detection methods such as open pose to detect them. And in fact, we already did some work on applying and optimizing pose estimation to this problem and I will briefly outline this at the end of this talk. The second is the line of the pedal and I will also briefly outline that the method that I present here for waterline detection can also be adapted to this problem. And the third component is the waterline and its detection from images is subject of the current work. That means in this talk I will present our approach for the waterline detection, which is based on a segmentation and a subsequent iterative procedure, and second, our approach to evaluate our method. This is particularly important because we first need to answer the question when a predicted waterline can actually be accepted as a valid prediction. And our waterline detection method is principally based on the mask RCNN approach as presented by He and colleagues in 2017. And in order to apply it to our problem, we used the implementation as provided by Metaport. And based on that, we implemented some modifications in order to adjust the net to our needs. And first of all, we restricted the net output to only two objects, namely two Carnus used in Carnus Sprint, which corresponds to the upper image, and two Carnus used in Kayak Sprint. Second, we trained our net by means of transfer learning. Therefore, we used the weights pre-trained on the COCO dataset and we constructed a training set and the validation set from a total number of 66 video sequences. The training set consisted of 58 canoes and 152 kayak images, and the validation set consisted of 11 canoe and 29 kayak images. And finally, we also applied some processing steps for data augmentation, for instance, horizontal flipping, a requartation of the image, some cropping, and also some padding. We trained that, and here you can see the result. On top, you can see the resulting Carnot segmentation for a particular example. Although the segmentation itself is not our desired target, we applied some performance measures. We assessed the segmentation quality using the intersection over union and obtained a mean value of 0.82 with a small standard deviation of 0.04 on our validation set. We also assessed the classification performance using the F1 score and not that surprisingly because of our very constrained problem, we obtained a perfect classification of the disciplines. The second part of the waterline detection problem is comprised of these steps. We determine the contour of the segmentation and keep the bottom line of this contour. We then apply a first linear regression to obtain an initial estimate of the waterline. And to mimic the cropping of small weights and splashes, points above this line are rejected. And finally, we apply a second linear regression and the results 
corresponds to the waterline estimate. Given that, the question is how to evaluate the predicted waterlines. This requires a suitable parameterization, an error matrix, and most importantly, a ground truth reference. The parameterization that we introduced for this purpose is presented here. It consists of a height parameter denoted with h and a rotation parameter denoted with alpha. The error matrix is of course straightforward. It consists of a deviation of a prediction from a given reference to which h prime and alpha prime refers to in this case here. And unlike in the classification task where the result is either true or false in the sense that it belongs to a given class or not, the waterline detection is a regression problem for which no accurate reference exists or can be measured at all. And in fact, the detection of a waterline as a boundary that separates the visible part of the Carnot from the visible part below the water surface is subject of individual perception and as a result, multiple solutions might be accepted as a valid prediction. Hence, we carried out an evaluation study with human experts in the field of kinematic parameter analysis in Carnot Sprint. And we were particularly interested to achieve the following goals. The first goal was to define a ground truth reference for a set of images, as well as to quantify the uncertainty among the experts' annotations. And given that, the second goal was to assess the performance of our waterline prediction method with respect to these annotations. We constructed an evaluation dataset consisting of four groups. Group A consisted of 90 images in which the predicted waterlines were embedded as predicted by our method. Groups B, C, and D consisted of 20, 10, and 10 images respectively, and they are based on adding some distortions to the predictions in order to prevent habituation to the annotation task and to force interaction from experts. The images were presented without disclosing the group affiliation by means of a web-based front-end, and we finally were able to present our dataset to a total number of seven experts, so that we finally obtained 828 annotations. To derive a ground truth, we carried out the following steps. First, we computed the mean waterline parameter for each image, image from all experts. Second, um, we determined the individual deviations from these mean parameters for each expert. And third, we compared these individual deviations. As you can see, the majority of the deviation is in the range of only plus minus two pixels for the height parameter and less than that 25 degrees for the rotation parameter. And these results actually tell us that the experts provided rather consistent annotations. And of course, it is straightforward to assume a certain similarity among them. The similarity assumption is also supported by the statistical analysis that we carried out in these distributions separately for each parameter. Given that we can assume the similarity, we were interested in the variability of the annotations among experts in order to define a range within which we would accept a predicted waterline as a valid estimate. And we derived the variability as the standard deviation of all individual deviations in our dataset. And finally, we use these values in order to define an acceptance range around the calculated mean expert annotations. And therefore, we use these two equations, which are colored in green, and estimated the parameter u such that 95% of all expert annotations are contained in this range. This eventually translates to plus minus 0.5 degree for the rotation parameter and plus minus 3.7 pixels for the height parameter. Given this kind of gold standard, we finally assess the accuracy of the waterline prediction method with respect to the expert annotations. And to do so, we computed the previously introduced error measures for our dataset. The results for the height parameter are shown on the left and for the rotation parameter in the right part of the figure. And the dark yellow bars denote the acceptance range and the table on the right outlines some parameters of these distributions. First of all, the results obtained for Carnot Sprint appear to be slightly worse than for Kayak Sprint. However, the majority of the results is still by far much lower than the gold standard, and only a minor portion exceeds this range. To emphasize this, we computed the portion of predictions that fell into this interval, it can be seen here, and as you can see, 85% of the results belong to this range if both parameters are considered together. Although this shows that there is still potential for further optimizations, the method turned out to provide robust and valuable estimates of the waterline. And of course, it is now of particular interest to also automatically determine the other component required for the analysis of kinematic parameters. And to that end, I also want to provide a brief outlook on our work on that matter. As I already mentioned, we applied this approach to the problem of pedaline detection. 
And in addition to the kanu, the petal itself is now part of the segmentation stage. The narrow green line denotes an estimate of the petal line, and we also already obtained very promising preliminary results on a small dataset. We also applied an implementation for 2D pose estimation and retrained the net with discipline-specific poses drawn from a very small training set. And here you can see the difference between the standard net on the left and the fine-tuned net on the right. It is obvious that particularly occlusions are detected much better. However, since the anchor points on the body used in today's manual analysis procedure are defined slightly different in comparison to the results of automatic pose estimation, an additional transformation step is necessary for a systematic evaluation is possible. And with that, I want to close and thank you for listening.